Hi Richard, thank you for your purchase of the Kaizen Miter Fence Pro Plus. That's what this video is about. I'm really looking forward to unboxing this thing right now and sharing it with you guys. This is not a sponsored video. This tool is not a big company. I doubt you'll be able to get this tool because they're very limited, but I will link it in the top of the description. And I'll also link Tom's YouTube channel where he talks about this tool. I'm gonna be putting it on this one right here, the uh, dual bevel slider, the 790 is what that one's called. But what is this? Uh, let's open it up and find out. There's the fence and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, that is some heavy duty, I don't know what it is. It might be aluminum, I'm not sure, but it's heavy. Wow, that, you know what? I can appreciate a beautiful tool or an accessory to a tool. And this actually reminds me of the miter clam clamps because those were also made by an individual trim carpenter. Tom is also a trim carpenter. And it just shows you like the craftsmanship they put into their work. They put it into their tools too. That is beautiful. Nothing wrong with having a beautiful tool, I'm gonna tell you. Here's the right side. That looks legit right there. What do we got here? Oh, no way. This right here, okay, this right here is really, really cool. In his, I did not know I was getting this. Um, I thought it was gonna be made out of wood. We'll do a whole separate video on this, but this is a jig where you can cut more degrees than your miter saw allows. I years ago did a video where I showed how you can, you know, set up a jig on your miter saw, but to have something like that's actually legit and machined. So we'll set this aside right now. That is pretty cool. I thought it was gonna be made out of plywood because in his videos it was made out of plywood, which would have been fine, but I prefer metal for sure. Oh, these are the little clips. Those are really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how those work. And we got, it looks like some kind of bracket over here. This, this is crazy. This is why I wanted to share this moment with you because I knew how excited I would be to start using this, install this thing and then start using it, show you guys everything it can do. But even if it was just for aesthetics, I'm a sucker. I probably would have bought it. Cause look, this thing is gonna go right there. That is legit. Oh man. And these have a blue tape right here. You can, we just take this off obviously, but they're there so this little uh, T-slot won't slide out because this is actually an adjustable thing. You can do many things with this. So I was just going over the instructions that he gives you on this thing. And he says right here that these holes that are countersink in the new fence should line up perfectly with the factory holes in the DeWalt fence. But he has a note on there saying, if you use those holes, you won't have zero clearance when the fences come together, which would be, I'll get the other one, put it right here, line up the holes. So when these come together, that's about as close as you're gonna get. Obviously that's not zero clearance. So the solution that he says on there is you just slide them over to how close you want them and then you just take that same countersink hole and you just drill a hole into your fence. So instead of using this factory hole, you're gonna use the hole that you create. <whistles> Whistle of approval for sure on this one. <laughs> These little T-tracks can drop in next and these T-tracks will drop into a T-slot that's machined into the fence. And these have little holes machined every so often. So the next thing we're gonna talk about and install is the brackets for the hold down clamp. Now, most people with a miter saw, when they buy it, they just kinda throw away the hold, hold down clamp. That's pretty much what I've always done. I've kind of held on to them and like never use them. And I end up eventually just tossing them in the trash because they're really inconvenient. And I don't know that I would use this one a whole lot either, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it and see if I do. Here are the hold down brackets and this will just go installed right there. And he has two 
uh, threaded holes right there and these will screw in from the back. So I'll just get these hand tightened for the sake of the video so we can move on to the next thing which is going to be the hold down clamp that drops into those hold down brackets and that's this one right here. He gives you this one in the kit. This is from Armor Tool. Has a little circular bolt right there and then there's a circle notch cut out here. This will just drop in there and once it's in place, it'll just stay there. And then you can use it. Obviously you can adjust these kind of clamps with a, a bolt, a little screw right here, tensioning screw. And then you can adjust it for, you know, different material thicknesses, pieces of crown. I've seen him doing that on his channel. So here are those two little knobs that go behind the T-tracks and they'll just thread into a hole back there. I'll go ahead and get those on. Now that we have our two knobs behind the T-tracks, what we can do is we can raise these up and then tighten that knob and then that track will stay wherever we want it to stay. So we can adjust it to any height that we need. And I can hear you guys right now, I can read your mind. I'm a mind reader actually. You're probably thinking, what is the point of that? Well, I'm gonna show you the point of that. So these little white clips right here, they will slide into the slots on that little track and this is where you can set up jigs for cutting crown, for cutting offset panel molding, pretty much anything you can think of where you need a repeatable cut. And like I said, I'll link the uh, creator of this product's channel down in the description because I'm not gonna talk about all the stuff you can do with these in this video. I eventually will, but I'll, I'm not gonna make this into like an hour long video. One thing I will show you guys real quick is cutting crown in a nested position just using these little uh, tabs right here and what you can do or what you do is you put it in a slot and then you raise your crown up to that nested position and I'm just going to eyeball it to where it's flat and then I can hold that in place and then tighten that knob on the back side of the track and then I can just you know cut crown in a nested position pushing it up against that little tab right there. So I can get into my miter, roll that crown up. If it's hitting the tab, it's in position, and then I can make my cut. So what's really cool about cutting crown this way, I haven't done it yet, so I'll let you guys know how I like it or not. But the one advantage I see right off the bat is that a lot of times me and John are trying to perform two different tasks, and one of those being crown molding, and that crown molding jig is in the way. For example, I'm cutting crown and John is cutting casing. And with that crown stop jig that we use in the way because it you know, covers across the whole saw, you know, he has to move it out of the way to cut the casing or you know, to cut the one by or whatever it is that we're cutting. And then we have to reset it up. It's a little bit of an inconvenience. Whereas you know, if I have this already set in place, you can just take this plastic clip right here and there's a little slot right here. You can just put it right there in place. So, you know, you could just move that or a lot of times that wouldn't even be in the way because when you're cutting casing, it's not gonna be up that high. But the crown stop jig would be in the way. These are the struggles of a trim carpenter. I know some of you guys understand, but these little things, I can already see the comments coming in. That little plastic clip is gonna get lost. And hey, it might, I, I haven't used this set at all. I know, I thought about that too. I'm like, I'm gonna lose those things. I'm gonna have to order some more for that guy and just have them on hand, which I'm probably gonna go ahead and do. And you know, you know, why a little piece of plastic? You know, same thing when I bought this cut hub, people were saying, you know, why is why are there plastic parts on it? It's so expensive. And these could be metal, yeah, but I don't think it's gonna matter that they're plastic or metal because all they're doing is they're just holding something in place. So not really a big deal there. But that's pretty much the overview of this fence system. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your first impression and if you have any questions or comments about this thing. You know, my first impression is I am very impressed by it, by the build quality. It feels like a nice, strong tool. I like the design and the ideas that he put into it. You could tell he really cared about it when he was manufacturing it and you know, putting this thing together. So time will tell if I'm really gonna use, you know, the crown nested in this position like this, you use that jig, we'll see, we'll see. It may change the way I work or I may not use it at all. And that's the thing about new tools and trying things out. You just don't know, you know, you gotta get on site and see like, how is, is this really gonna work? Is it gonna perform 
for the way that I like to work and is it going to perform the tasks that it claims it's going to perform. I think it will, but again, I'll have to give you an update on it. So that's that first introduction to this thing. There'll be many more videos on this and I'm looking forward to seeing how it holds up. So I'll catch you guys in the next video.